And we return to our top story this evening. China's legislature has wrapped up its annual sessions against the backdrop of growing challenges on the domestic and international fronts. Officials have laid out broad plans on how to tackle them through the week-long meetings. For more analysis on these plans, we're joined by Dr. Dylan Lowe. Now, he's an assistant professor of public policy and global affairs at Nanyang Technological University. Dr. Lowe, I think we are talking very specifically about economic challenges here. The broad plans, given deep deflation, high youth unemployment and weak consumer demand, amongst other problems, did these broad plans deliver on stimulus that might reignite China's economy? Not exactly. Um, there are no real surprises, but also no real big moves by the government. Um, and a lot of watchers were looking out for those big moves or stimulus. So in, in many ways, there's a lot of discourse and pronouncements, but short on specifics. And we are still awaiting more details, for example, on uh, new productive forces, on higher quality, sustainable growth, and on uh, removing restrictions in manufacturing and so on and so forth. So um, plenty of targets, plenty of direction, but how we get there, um, I think for now at least, it, it is left unanswered. All right, Dr. Lo, uh, if I could sum that up, long on discourse, short on detail. But right. for, to get exactly. the hard core growth, we need to, I suppose, increase wealth, increase incomes in households, and increase confidence in the people to go out and spend. What kind of policies would you have liked to see come out of the NPC? I think a lot of uh, people were waiting to see more stimulus, uh, government making bolder, pl uh, bolder plans to stimulate uh, consuming, con people consuming, but, uh, and also in restoring confidence, uh, both in the business end and both within domestic society. Um, but I think that we have not yet seen that. I think the business community would need much more details, much bigger, bolder moves, um, whether or not that is in tackling very difficult, deep-rooted problems on housing, uh, reforming some of the banking sector or whatnot. Um, some of these things that people were anticipating have not really borne out. Uh, but on the other hand, to me, I, I think that um, having that 5% figure in itself is a positive uh, take away because despite the headwinds that China is facing both domestically and externally, the fact that they have raised or maintained this figure uh, underlines some confidence they have in 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 hitting a uh, five percent figure. So all things considered, uh, I think it's it's not too bad. All right, uh, Dr. Lo, uh, and I'm going to expand on this point because the NPC, in a way, what many find reassuring is its unchanging nature. So as you say, just to state five percent let alone whether we can get there or not get there, to even say so is a point of confidence both for the government and for the people hearing that coming out of their government. In terms of discourse, so today we've had uh, there will be the amendments to the organic law on both the nature and the duties of the state council. In effect, that does not change years, decades of the relationship between the state council and the party. The state council has never been disobedient to the party. So why does this law, why is it exciting any kind of comment if it only formalises what is already there? Right. Um, I, I think there are several reasons why it has uh, gotten more attention. Um, I think because of the um, nature of this change, it has not been touched since 1982. Um, so the fact that it has uh, made a change to a law that has been there for so long is attention grabbing in itself. But um, in reality, this is not that surprising, uh, considering the moves that predate this for the party, laying the path for the party to exert greater political control over a state and society. This is actually a furtherance of this trend that we see uh, for several year now, years now, and, and, and really this formalizes it. Um, the part of which is of particular interest is that it now introduces the clause where um, state council has to listen to party ideology, uh, has to listen to instructions from the party leadership. Um, that, to me, um, formalizes and makes it quite clear that the state council's role has been diminished compared to previous administrations. It is quite clear now that policy and policy making serves party politics and implementation of policy is towards party political ends. So in other words, uh, 
demarcating, formalizing, and institutionalizing and giving it the highest legislative seal on the function of the state council in China's government. That's what has happened. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think that this is a trend that will probably continue. Um, President Xi himself is, of course, no stranger to breaking conventions and breaking uh, traditions. So um, we should not be surprised when we uh, see more conventions and traditions being broken moving forward. Thanks, Ed. Dr. Dylan Lewis, Assistant Professor of Public Policy and Global Affairs at Nanyang Technological University.